Hi, my name is Kim Jacobson. I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a lawyer, and at the age of 51, during a global pandemic, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. This video blog is one in a series of blogs that I've recorded to share my story about what it's like to be diagnosed with Parkinson's disease at a relatively young age during a pandemic. Today, I'm gonna to talk about three things, social connectivity, nutrition, and exercise. I've, since I've been diagnosed now about seven months ago, I've been doing a lot of research into what kind of things I can change in my life so that my disease progresses to the least extent possible. And I obviously looked into things like medication, um, which I am taking and I've talked about in a, a, a previous blog. Um, I also have talked about therapy for the depression, which I've talked about previously. But I was thinking about what are the things I can do now, besides the things I was already doing, that might change my life or help me um, make my life the best life I can live with this disease. And there are three things that really um, have touched home for me. And those are social connectivity, nutrition, and exercise. And I'm gonna talk about all of those. I didn't come up with this idea on my own. I was listening to a webinar by Dr. Laura Mishley, who has been studying um, mostly, um, she's a holistic doctor and she's been studying nutrition and she's been studying supplements and seeing what kind of effect those might have on people with Parkinson's disease. Um, but she also did a study on, which involved social connectivity. And I think, I believe she mentioned exercise as well. And so I thought to myself, okay, let me evaluate these three areas of my life and see, you know, where can I go? What can I do differently? What am I doing really well now? Um, so I first want to talk about um, exercise. I would say exercise and nutrition. I'm calling it nutrition rather than diet. And I'll explain why I do that when I deal with that subject. Um, but those two things have been my frenemies. There have been times when I've been really good at eating things that are healthy for me, keeping my weight down, um, and maybe the weight isn't even what it's about, and I'll talk to you about that also. Um, but eating more healthy, cooking a lot for myself. Um, I've definitely, through the years, had on and off gym memberships. Um, there were times when I exercised a lot. I went through a spurt of doing 5Ks with very good friends of mine. And um, I won't say I ran the 5Ks, but we walked and jogged. And I, I've been really in shape at different times in my life. I've worked with physical trainers. Um, I've, I've done all sorts of things. I've really enjoyed water aerobics at different times. And then there definitely have been times in my life where I just wanted to sit and watch TV. I really didn't want to move. I just wanted to kind of just watch TV. I have to say I'm an avid TV watcher. I don't think there's really anything negative about watching TV. Um, I love TV. <laughs> I love reality television. I'm, I'm, it's, it's one of my favorite things. Um, but I think that when you're just sitting and you're just watching TV and you're not moving, it's obviously not healthy for your body. Right before the pandemic, I was actually doing pretty well with my exercising. I had joined a gym and I was taking pretty consistently body combat classes and Zumba classes. And I was going three or four times a week. And I think I was using it to help with my depression for sure as well. But I was really enjoying the classes. I was enjoying the movement. I was enjoying sort of the energy of being in a class with lots of different people. This particular gym gave me the option of going to several different locations. So I liked seeing the different gyms and meeting different people. Um, and I was really enjoying the exercise. I was pretty, um, active and walking also before the pandemic. We would walk at lunch with my coworkers, even when it was really cold out, we would always bundle up and try to do a good 15, 20 minutes, maybe a little bit longer if the weather permitted. Um, there was a lot of movement just in going to an office building, parking the car, taking the stairs up, 
to the floor that I was on, going down to the cafeteria. It was a large office building. You had to walk to the copier, walk to a, a coworker's cubicle, go to talk to your boss, walk here, walk some more. And I was wearing a Fitbit and I was pretty consistently getting 6,000, 7,000 steps without really having to do much of anything. And if I did an exercise class on top of that or a long walk with my husband after work, I was pretty much consistently getting to um, 10,000 steps. Once the pandemic hit, a lot of that changed. First of all, all the gyms where I'm living in Connecticut, they shut down. So I didn't have access to the gym at all. Uh, the pandemic hit in March, and so the weather in New England and Connecticut, sometimes it's nice, and I think this year it snowed really late, maybe even into late April or early May, it was unusual. But it was kind of still cold out, so we walked a little bit, but not to the extent we probably should have been. And it was depressing, it was a pandemic and we just felt like eating and uh, sitting around and I kind of gave myself a break, but I did feel myself kind of getting very stiff. I was sitting, working from home, I'm an attorney, but now everything is virtual. All our mediations are virtual. Uh, any kind of legal proceedings that I've been involved with have been virtual because no one can go in person anymore. And so, going from a pretty active career where I was walking around and talking to people um, to really just sitting like this on the computer or doing virtual meetings like this um, and trying to walk during lunch with my husband, but my activity level was really down quite a bit. Um, and so one of the things I've been trying to do now that I have been officially diagnosed with Parkinson's um, Anything I've read anywhere says that exercise is one of the only things other than medication that is good for Parkinson's and that may even alleviate some of the symptoms of Parkinson's. And so once my meds kicked in, it was much easier to start being a little bit more physically fit. Um, I was able to move a little bit more. I started taking, um, I talked previously, but I did the LSVT big program, which is a physical therapy program designed for people with Parkinson's. And what that program does, um, amongst other things, is teach you, I think there's around eight to 10 basic exercises that you're supposed to do every day. Um, so I've learned those exercises as well, and I try to do them every day. If my physical therapist is listening, I do them all the time. But in reality, I do them a couple of times a week. Um, but what I've also, um, have done is um, once the restrictions on the gyms eased up a, lot, a little bit, there was a great boxing gym nearby that did a rock steady boxing class, which is a boxing class specifically designed for people with Parkinson's. So I went to that. Um, I enjoyed that. I don't know that actual boxing with a bag is the thing I love the most, but it was nice to have an exercise class designed for someone with my limitations or really not, I shouldn't say limitations, but someone designed to, with movements that were designed for my disease in particular to strengthen myself. Um, I did that for a while. I did that probably from July until I would say November and then the COVID started spreading a little bit more in Connecticut. I felt a little bit uncomfortable being in the gym, knowing that there was so much COVID going on. So temporarily, I have stopped doing that. I may go back to that. I'll have to decide once the pandemic gets better, whether that's going to be something for me. But I really miss actually just the normal classes at the gym. So I've been trying to find something to replicate that. And what I I did have a bunch of videos of DVDs. My husband set up a DVD player and I've been doing a lot of that. Um, but what I did notice is that if you are an Amazon member, and again, nothing I'm talking about, I'm not getting any money from anyone. This is just my personal experience, but Amazon Prime has a lot of free videos and they could keep you, um, I just like to do a lot of different things. Right now I'm very focused on doing small weights and full body workouts and there's a bunch of great videos there. You could go on YouTube as well there and look up exercises for Parkinson's if you want those specifically, but really any beginner's exercise you could do if you're not accustomed to doing exercise, start with the beginning. Um, and even if you're just walking, I, I just think anything you can do to keep moving 
it helps your body, it strengthens you out. I am seeing a physical therapist every six months or so now um, to tweak things. Like I have sort of a consistent lower back pain and she's definitely given me a lot of ideas on stretching my back and how to alleviate that, which once your pain is better, it's much easier to move. So I would say, again, I'm not an exercise expert, but it's good for your mind. It helps with the anxiety and depression. It's good to move. It makes you feel better. Um, so I would say explore that um, for sure. That's the one consistent advice everyone's given me in terms of dealing with this disease. The next thing I want to talk about is a little more personal, I suppose, in terms of my um, experience with weight. Um, I am a person who tends to yo-yo and go up and down with their weight. Um, after my second child was born, I was about 220 pounds, which is a, a quite a bit larger than I am now. Um, and I was not happy in my skin and wanted to do something. And I had pretty good success with Weight Watchers at the time. Again, I'm not advertising anything here. Um, and I was able to get down at one point to about 145. Um, I don't know if ultimately Weight Watchers was the right thing for me to do for a lifelong journey. Probably not, because what I tend to do is gain 20 pounds, lose 20 pounds, gain 10 pounds, lose 5 pounds, gain 20 pounds, lose 5 pounds. And I'm also on a um, SSRI right now, which is an antidepressant, uh, anti-anxiety medication. And one of the unfortunate side effects is you kind of eat mindlessly. And even though you have really good intentions for um, sticking to healthy eating and a diet, um, it kind of takes it's a side effect of that medication. A lot of people gain weight on that medication. And so um, trying to reframe the idea of diet and trying to change it to nutrition. Um, I somewhat got this idea from a really good friend of mine, Dr. Kim Daniels. Um, she talks a lot about um, that your weight is not your worth, that about intuitive eating, about uh, body imaging. Um, as a matter of fact, I told her I was going to give her a shout out on this video. Uh, and she said, wouldn't it just be great if we could all concentrate on changing the world instead of being skinny? Uh, how much we, could we accomplish? And I think that her um, ideas about food as um, nutrition and not as something to super focus on diet are really, really important lessons. I am going to put her website in these notes. And um, again, she's just a friend of mine. I'm not getting anything for recommending this, but I would say check her out if you're interested in that. What I can say is it's a journey. Um, what I am trying to do now is something different than I've ever done in my life. So I did listen to Dr. Mishley's webinar um, and she studied what foods are helpful that she thinks would be helpful to avoid and to eat in terms of um, Parkinson's disease specifically. And the interesting thing is, although I have an issue with um, gaining weight, a lot of people with Parkinson's have an issue of keeping weight on. But I think Dr. Mishley's advice is really about eating good nutritious foods um, about eating fresh foods and healthy foods. Um, and I, I am right now trying to avoid dairy and meat. I think there's probably good evidence out that there's a lot of chemicals in dairy and meat. Um, they're hard to digest and I have a lot of digestion problems associated with Parkinson's disease. So right now that's what I'm trying. Can I say I'm gonna be able to stick with it my whole life? I don't know. My sister is vegan. She's been giving me a lot of advice because it's similar to a vegan diet. Uh, I've just added in fish and eggs instead of going totally vegan. Um, so it's a journey for me. Food is a friend of me for sure. I mean, I have a sugar habit that I probably need to break, but I know that eating healthy and putting good food into my body. Food is medicine, and I'm hoping the more nutritious foods that I'm putting into my body, the more healthy foods that have less chemicals, less sweeteners, less artificial ingredients. It just seems pretty intuitive that putting you're gonna put healthy things in that it's gonna help your health 
Um, I can't say I've been doing this now three or four weeks in terms of this new diet. I can't say whether it's helpful or not. And I wouldn't even necessarily recommend it to anyone else. But what I would recommend is trying to eat as many healthy, nutritious foods as possible because we're putting something into our body and we want to make sure that we're getting the best output that we can. Um, again, I know that's really hard in some parts of this country and in parts of the world to get really good, healthy, nutritious foods. So, you know, just do the best you can with what you have and, and make the best of what you have. Um, the last thing I really want to talk about, I think is actually more important than diet or ex, uh, than nutrition. Well, I caught myself nutrition or exercise in terms of handling this disease. Uh, and Dr. Mishley actually agrees with this. And I think the number one thing that has made me feel positive and made me feel hopeful and good is my social connectivity. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about what that is and how I've accomplished that. And hopefully it'll be helpful to other people as well. Um, so the first thing is I have a really close knit family. I have only one sister and, um, although we haven't always been as close, I would say right now we're probably besides childhood, the closest that we've ever been. And I really adore her. Um, and I've really through this journey, through my depression, through my anxiety, like we've really connected and she's really been there for me. And I think, um, you know, having someone who is there for you like that is so important. My mom and me are super close. We're a very female oriented family and the three of us are really tight. And I think, you know, having that connectivity has definitely helped me through this journey. And I know that not everyone has family that is going to be there for you like this. And I'm very blessed and very lucky. But besides having a really, really close family, um, I've also learned to reach out and deepen the friendships that I already have. Um, so when I first uh, was diagnosed with Parkinson's, I told my immediate family, and again, my husband is an only child and doesn't have any siblings or parents alive right now. And so my family was just my sister, my mother, and my father. So I told my immediate family and they were really supportive. And then I really just picked three really, really close friends um, to talk about this. And I didn't tell other people right away. And I think there was a couple of reasons for that. One is that I was not sure what even this was parkinson's obviously doing all these videos there's so much to learn and so much to talk about and i really wanted to understand what it was for me but i think i was also like a little embarrassed like parkinson's has to do with your mind and i wasn't sure what people would think of me would they think that i'm not going to be able to function would they think that i'm not going to be who am i even going to be did i even have time for people in my life i didn't know so I told the few friends and they were obviously very supportive. Those are my closest friends. And then little by little, I started telling other people. And wouldn't you know, the more people I told, the more supported I felt. And it seems kind of funny because I think there's a lot of stigma that goes along with Parkinson's disease and a lot of embarrassment. Um, and I have found that by talking about it and telling my story, I'm creating less stigma and I feel more comfortable in my own skin. And rather that, than that this disease feeling like it's an obstacle in my way or something terrible that's happening to me every day, I actually feel like, although I obviously would prefer not to have Parkinson's disease, no one wants to have the constant pain and problems that I may have down the road, I actually feel that it's been a door to open up my relationships and have more genuine relationships with people because I'm talking about intimate details of my life sharing intimate details of my life and people have been really receptive and really understanding. The other thing I did, and I did this before I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, um, when my first child left for college, I decided, you know, I have this great career, which I love doing civil rights law, but I wanted to do something just totally creative, totally just for me. I had always sang in my synagogue choir and loved to sing. Uh, and was thinking I really wanted to do more singing. And I found this great organization called Rock Voices. And they have um, chapters throughout New England and in New York as well. And um, 
There's one also in Portland. So we're, 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 they're all over the country. Uh, and their mission is healing ourselves and others through songs. And that really rang with me. And basically it's a choir that sings rock songs. Um, and I went and I, believe it or not, I'm a little bit on the shy side and I went early on, it's been about five years ago now, and I went and met people and people were so warm and inviting and I tried out and did a solo my first season and um, it, it really has been a source of strength and family and it's a really meaningful organization for me and it's given me connectivity on two fronts. It's connected me to music, which I think is going to be a huge, huge um, friend to me as I go through this journey of this disease. But it's also connected me to people that I would have never met. And some of my best friends actually are through Rock Voices. Um, and even though now we're all singing virtually, I still feel very, very connected with them. I always get texts from them and Facebook messages, um, and we're singing virtually together. So when I see the videos compiled, it feels like we're all together and we have rehearsals on the, com on the computer, or on Facebook or on Zoom. And it's just given me a real great source of connectivity. So if you are in the New England area or New York and you want to know more about that, I'll put more information in the notes of this episode. Um, or if it's still a pandemic, we're simming virtually and you can just go to rockvoices.com and sign up. Um, again, I'm not getting any money. I'm just talking about my story and what I went through. But I think finding any hobby that you can really connect with and interact with people is the really, really important in um, dealing with this disease. Um, and the last thing I wanna talk about is sharing your story which is what I'm doing now. And so I started to share my story one-on-one, um, -on -one, just telling people what I was going through. And I shared it with some coworkers and I felt very, very warm and supportive. And it made me think I need to share my story more and other people with Parkinson's disease need to share their story so that people can be aware of this disease and we could raise awareness and raise money for curing Parkinson's disease. So what I'm doing is I'm sharing my story with you now, um, my story of joy and hope, and I hope that all of you have enjoyed it and will consider donating money to the Michael J. Fox uh, Foundation for Research for Parkinson's Disease. Love and peace. Talk to you soon.